How you guys doing? We're on a vintage nitro road trip. We're gonna pick up a freaking nitro right now. I have like about a mile till I get off this highway. It's a sickening highway here called the Belt Parkway in Brooklyn. We're picking up an early 2000s vintage Yokomo GT4W. I almost forgot the name right there. So it turns out I already have one of these, but as you guys might know, I always say you need about two to three of each vintage nitro before you're ever really satisfied. Now this particular one is probably the cleanest and nicest looking one I have ever seen. That's why I need to get it guys. I'm driving to Brooklyn right now. I'm expecting to pay $175 for it. Now that is a little bit more than I'm really comfortable with, but it's okay. We're going to merge here to get off the Belt Parkway. We're taking exit 11N towards Flatbush Avenue and the Flatlands. We're going to Brooklyn Hobbies to pick up a freaking vintage nitro. I'm very excited. I'm on Flatbush Avenue driving to Brooklyn Hobbies. I am about eight minutes away right now. So, Yokomo GT4W, this one, take a look at the picture before I get it. You know, I like to do a little bit of a, a kind of expectations what I think I'm going to get video. And this is that video before I pick it up because the next time you see me guys, I will have the Yokomo in my hands one way or another but sometimes of course it's also taco bell in my hand but in this case we might have ourselves a nitro so the body is really nicely painted honestly i hate painting bodies this one it's purple it has some sparkle but it, it honestly that's not an easy paint job to do you got to do a whole bunch of masking this and that but the chassis the motor looks very clean i do not see a single non-original part on this chassis anyways We'll talk more about that in a little bit. I got to drive over here. There's probably a whole bunch of coppers on the way. So we'll be back in a little bit with the Yokomo. Going to Brooklyn Hobbies. Make Nitro great again. We got Sickening Kings Plaza over here. Giant mall. Whole bunch of stores where you could spend your money. But of course for us, we only want to spend the money on Nitro. Right? Yeah. All our money goes to nitro. That's why we're driving a Prius. And guess how many miles a gallon I'm getting right now, guys? And it's cold. Check that out. 53 miles a gallon so far. And it's probably only going to go up. That's why you got to get a Prius. Because you could save money on gas and buy more nitros. Brooklyn Hobbies gotta find the parking spot let's see it's uh, pretty congested over here so check this out guys there it is the hobby store Brooklyn freaking hobbies right over there look at that logo Brooklyn Hobbies gotta figure out where I'm going to meet this dude I'm not sure if it's inside the store or outside the store but as you could tell parking here there's a bunch of snow everywhere I'm going to text the guy right now see you in a little bit Put the hazards on, right? Five hundred. I was asking three, three fifty or three seventy-five. Yeah. hundred dollars We got the Yokomo in the front seat. I'm going to drive home now. But check this out. We got ourselves a Yokomo GT4. Just a quick little 
body off for review. Look at look how clean this thing is. It's sickening. Not a single scratch on the cooling head, including the air filter. I can't believe it. The two-speed gears look like new. Absolutely no strippage in them. Look at those fresh-looking batteries. And yes, these are the original wheels that Yokomo came with. I'm very excited. Even the bottom of the chassis. Check that out, guys. Literally almost like new. All right. This is a fairly congested road. I got to get in and I got to get home. We'll do a further update and review on this in a little bit, my dudes. Check that out. Also, radio, original two channel. We got some uh, original paperwork over here for the Yokomo GT4. We got the manual GT4W. I will check out what the W stands for. I'm not quite sure, but this thing is very, very sickening. Look at it. Two speed, baby. Well, guys, I'm at the Nitro Gang headquarters. I washed the body in the sink. You're looking at exactly what I purchased. I know I gave it a quick little overview when I first put it into the Prius, but now I've had a couple minutes here to look over the chassis, and I think we're going to do a couple minutes on the as-is condition, go over what's wrong, take a look at the super awesome, interesting, original Yokomo manual, and then guess what? I've also been able to locate this exact car in a vintage RC Car Action magazine. We'll take a look at this. It says, nine-time IFMAR world champion. This chassis, guys, is freaking spectacular. Now, the body on it, it's one of those where, you know, you either love it or you're asking yourself, how come there's uh, glitter where the headlights are supposed to be? You know, you're asking yourself, if this is in some sort of march, what kind of march would this Mazda Veilside RX-7 body be in? I've never been a member of those marches, but I do support the type of people that like to partake in those marches. Anyways, let's get down to business. Let's take the body off and take a look at this awesome, sickening Nitro chassis. By the way, yes, this is the original radio, and I will be testing out the electronics as they are. Let's do this, guys. Okay. Well, this is what you get. It's a, a very nice, original, clean Yokomo chassis. Looking from this position, there's almost nothing wrong that you can tell here at all. Everything is where it needs to be, and it's in position correctly. I was going to remove the cooling head, take a look inside the motor, because guess what? It's seized. That's right. I cannot pull the pull start at all. It is 100% completely seized. But... I'm not going to do that in this video. We'll get around to it in the future. What matters is the two-speed gears, they're completely nice and straight, fluid, not stripped at all. I've turned on the electronics. We have a two-channel Blazer Sport radio. These are basically just Airtronics radios. They're quite good. And electronics are functional, right? Servo throttle trim. Steering, steering works. The only thing I did so far to this chassis is just replace it with uh, normal batteries. The double A's in here are new and we should be good to go. The gears, very good. Absolutely no sign of gear damage of any kind. I can see they spin freely. Another important thing, sometimes it's a situation with these old belt drive cars. They have a lot of friction. So this one rolls forward and backwards smoothly. Absolutely nothing at all wrong with it. Take a look at the bottom of this chassis, guys. It is almost like new. It looks like there was a little bit of tape here in the front, probably to protect it from parking lot damage. And, you know, it's it's protected. The guy told me he didn't run this much. Uh, he really cared about nitros, and I'm quite sure the seller will be watching this video. This is as original and clean of one of these cars you will ever see. By the way, notice the front spool in this. That's right. As I move one wheel here in the front, you could see the other wheel is also moving. So we have ourselves a front locked spool. The spool is automatically locked and you really don't have to say locked because it's a spool. There is no differential. That's how these things work. Suspension wise, you know, it's a, it's a touring car. It's a little bit low in the front here. Let's check out the rear suspension. In the back, it has a good amount of ride height. 
you know, you cannot kill the ride height here in the back. So we have a three belt drive system as expected for a lot of these uh, vintage touring cars. In fact, a lot of the one eighth scale cars that compete today are all belt drive. Chassis wise, this thing is 100% complete. I do not see anything at all missing here. It is just quite unfortunate that the motor is seized. You know, I can't spin the post starter at all. And also the carburetor, I noticed as I remove the air filter, the carburetor inside, it's also seized. So I cannot move the barrel. I will have to disassemble this engine and clean it as I normally do. But what matters is everything is here. It's complete. In terms of value, I paid 175 bucks. I already told you that, guys. And it's a vintage collectible. You know, you need to have about two to three of these to actually drive one of these things, right? But yeah, it seems it seems to work, right? Not bad. Let's take a look at the mention in this old 2001 radio control car action magazine. There almost always is an ad for a Yokomo in here. And guess what? I found just the perfect ad for this Yokomo GT4. That's right. It says 110th gas touring car, 2000 Roar National Champion. I like the sound of that. Now this model, if you notice, is a little bit different than mine because the one I have, let me show you on the manual. It is the newer version. It's the GT4W. So this one, I don't see a W here. This probably is about a year before this one came out, maybe two years. This is the Yokomo RX18 engine, a very good engine. I actually ran this before. It is a quite sickening 0.18 nitro motor. This one, I honestly do not know what that is. They don't make a mention of it here, but they do wanna make sure that you know that it's the European Touring Car Championship TQ and first place winner and also Roar Gas Touring National Champion. This is a lot of win, guys. This is a lot of wins right here. I see 1999 all the way through 2000 here for the IFMAR World Championship first and third. So I guess they had multiple cars like this competing during that time period. Let's see, we'll do a random page flip just because Yokomo. Oh, what do we get? We get some Kyosho stuff over here. Check that out. Kyosho, sickening, nitro, buggy. Another random page flip, what do we get? We get a Duratrax Maximum ST with a torque 12 engine. Guys, in these old RC magazines, pretty much no matter what page you flip to, you're going to get a nitro. This is kind of funny actually, check this out. I found an original ad for the same exact radio that I have. The Sport Blazer, or the Blazer Sport, however you want to call it. These are just Airtronics radios. Check this out. This is the same exact blue one. Quite sickening. The only problem is, I noticed this one has a dual rate adjustment knob here on top. And the one I have is the really, really cheap one. It does not even have the dual rate adjustment. So we just have basic steering trim and throttle trim. But in reality, that is all you need. Blue radios, guys. Who would have thought about that? Well, Airtronics did. Let's see what else we got. Oh, man. Look at that. We got the Kyosho V1 RR. 110 scale nitro touring during this time period. This car was kicking it. You know, the whole competition, the whole class. Oh, man. What's this? GS Racing Sonic. Well, this looks like it's a little bit too much money for me. And uh, it's a 1.8 scale. Looks very similar to the Serpents and very similar to all of the 1.8 scale Nitro on roads. A little bit out of my price range. My price range for vintage Nitro is what you're looking at right here. All right, guys, more on this sickening Yokomo in a little while. Thank you all for being channel members, my Patreon supporters, people that watch this channel. You're the reason, guys, why I'm able to make Nitro great again. And trust me, this one, is going to be getting fired up soon. It's going to be on the road. And we will have made Nitro great again. One more car at a time. And now, see you guys later.